South America is a continent comprising 12 countries, as well as three additional dependent territories. It is mostly in the southern and western hemispheres, with the far north situated in the northern hemisphere. Its climate is wide and varied. A large part of the north and center is tropical, whilst parts of the south and west are arid or temperate. The continent is quite simply breathtaking in its geography and ecology. Home to the largest rainforest in the world, the Amazon, South America also boasts the Angel Falls as the world's highest waterfalls, the Andes as the longest mountain range, the Atacama Desert as the driest non-polar desert, and Lopez May Decay as the wettest place on Earth. But what was South America like during the Ice Age? Did it always have such a varied existence? When we talk about the last Ice Age, we are typically referring to the glacial period that occurred between 115,000 years ago and about 11,000 years ago. We are technically still in the Ice Age, as we have ice sheets at the poles, but we are living during an interglacial period right now. The last Ice Age affected the Northern Hemisphere more than the Southern Hemisphere. This is because there is a greater landmass in the North compared to the South which is mostly comprised of oceans. Glaciers expanded, and ice sheets formed over much of Europe, Asia, and North America. With a lot more seawater locked up as ice, land bridges formed when receding sea levels exposed more land. This allowed animals and modern-day man to migrate across the globe. Generally speaking, South America was cold and dry at the beginning of the last ice age. As the climate warmed and an increase in moisture covered the continent over 100,000 years ago, the forests that South America is famed for grew to the extent they are found today. However, during the fluctuating glacial cycles of the Ice Age, aridity and coldness gripped the globe once more about 70,000 years ago. This change in conditions influenced the vegetation significantly. There was a considerable contraction of rainforests, and semi-deciduous woodlands were replaced by grasslands. The loss of trees had an impact on the biota in South America. Animals migrated from the coldest, driest, and harshest habitats, seeking refuge in the sparse woodlands and forests that remained. These conditions eased off until their return about 22,000 years ago, when another cold spell hit the continent. South America temperatures and rainfall only began to rise about 14,000 years ago. This marked the return of the vegetation we find in today's South America. As plants began to disperse from their species-rich refugia, savanna vegetation replaced deserts, sparse tundra was replaced by steppe, and temperate rainforest reappeared. With the Amazon as one of the most biodiverse and species-rich places on Earth, it is interesting to consider what it was like during the Ice Age. It was home to some incredible animals which have since become extinct. At the Amazon's core, it is largely thought that small pockets of rainforest refugia survived throughout the changing climate of the Pleistocene, offering a relatively stable habitat for some animal species. Sediment cores recently extracted from the bottom of Lake Titicaca reveal that some of the South American tropics were in fact a wet and humid environment during the Ice Age. Not only did the landscape and climate look different during the last Ice Age, but the animal species that roamed South America were remarkable and unique. Today, South America is home to an array of wildlife species, from capybaras, sloths, and jaguars to giant anteaters, tapers, and llamas, to name just a few. But once upon a time, South America was filled with rich megafauna, some of which have no modern-day analogs for comparison. Megatherium was a ground sloth that was endemic to South America during the Pleistocene. This genus also included a massive species. It was called the giant ground sloth, and it weighed four tons and was almost seven feet tall at the shoulder. It was comparable to modern-day elephants in size and was able to stand on its hind legs to reach vegetation from overhanging branches. They inhabited woodland and grassland in what is now Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, and Chile. 
human expansion and subsequent habitat destruction, and hunting are thought to have contributed to the demise of this gentle giant at the end of the Ice Age. Another equally impressive giant that lived in South America was Glyptodon. This was an armadillo-like creature that weighed 1,800 pounds and was as large as a small car. They were common across much of South America, living in forested and grassland habitats. It had heavily armored skin, a tough, rounded shell, and could use its tail for defense and attack. Glyptodon became extinct at the end of the Ice Age, although some of its relatives survived for 4,000 years or more. As the Bering Land Bridge formed during the end of the last Ice Age, modern man was able to cross from Eurasia into the Americas. These people descended southwards throughout North America and crossed into South America approximately 14,000 years ago. These early humans are known as the Clovis people and are thought to have contributed to the mass extinction that occurred across North and South America around that time. All South American mammals larger than 100 kilograms died out, and the exact reason for their extinction is a hot topic for debate. Many of these animal species had survived the previous 12 ice ages. So, why was this one any different? It is thought the Clovis people were to blame. However, some animals continued to live alongside these people for thousands of years before they eventually became extinct. This points towards a combination of climatic change and anthropogenic activity that resulted in the megafaunal mass extinctions. Of course, these extinctions weren't unique to the Americas and occurred across the globe at the end of the Ice Age. Other animals found in South America during the Pleistocene included Macrochiniidae. This was a camel-like animal with hooves like a rhino and an elongated trunk like nose. Toxodon was another peculiar creature that had the body of a rhino, the head of a hippo, and the teeth of a rodent. It weighed 3,000 pounds and stood 5 feet tall at the shoulder. Short-faced bears that traveled from South to North America over the Panama Land Bridge also lived in South America along with Hippididian horses and the elephant-like gomphotheres. Perhaps the most famous of the Ice Age animals, the Smilodon, was common throughout South America. With their elongated canines, these giant cats are also known as saber-toothed cats, and some individuals weighed over 650 pounds. They hunted in both open and forested habitats and preyed upon species like the ground sloths, Glyptodon, and Toxodon. Smilodon was an ambush predator, hiding in dense vegetation before pouncing on its prey. It was not capable of running at great speeds over open land, nor was it a very good climber. From studying the fossil record and specimens found in California's La Brea Tar Pits, Saber-toothed cats became extinct 10,000 years ago. It is thought that the loss of the large prey species Smilodon predominantly hunted led to its demise. Large herbivores were replaced by smaller, more agile species such as deer. These were prey that the saber-toothed cats could not keep up with. It is also likely humans and climate change played a role in their extinctions, like so many other species at the time. Of course, some species from the Ice Age still survive today. South America's jaguar, although smaller than its Ice Age predecessors, is the same species that has adapted incredibly well. Similarly, fossil records show that the humble capybara lived in Argentina 9 million years ago, rather than mourning the loss of some of the Earth's greats. We should be celebrating the incredible adaptability of today's survivors. Scientists are looking to the changes that occurred during the last Ice Age for answers about our planet's future. Understanding how different species respond to changing environmental conditions may provide insight into the Earth's current global warming. Although cycles of climate change are a natural phenomenon that has occurred throughout the millennia, the Earth has never experienced such rapid anthropogenic contributions before. That's all for today! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.